So today we're going to make a procedural map using A star. What it looks like is you start with the point and you carve your way to the edge and we're going to go to each edge for now. Uh, it makes a kind of an interesting map for the fact that it makes a lot of random nooks and crannies uh, that not good for every game, but it depends on what you want. Uh, it could be kind of annoying to have to look into each corner, but if you're hiding something, maybe that's what you would like. It kind of has more of a maze feel, like an underground tunnels or something like that. Uh, so anyway, it keeps going, but we'll just go ahead and get into the code. Uh, before we start, we have just the basic tile map node with the very simple tile set, just the floor and the rock. So we have the tiles that we enumerate, the current map size or that we'll need, and the number of starting points that we'll use while making the map. So we're going to be using A star, which I had another tutorial planned, but then I while making it, I realized that A star isn't something that you just throw into a tutorial. It seems to be one of those topics that people get kind of caught up on. So I, this is halfway meant to be an A star introduction and also to make a procedural map. That's kind of interesting. So in the ready, we'll go ahead and randomize and make the A star map, and then we'll actually make the tile set map and apply the cells. So to make an A star map, you have to do it in in the script. You can't do it with a node or in the inspector. You can't find the node in the inspector. So you just put A star dot new, and then we'll go ahead and populate all the points on the A star map. So what an A star map is, it's kind of like that old game where you on a piece of paper you put a whole bunch of dots down and you connect all the squares or all the lines of and trying to make the squares. Uh, except the computer is playing by itself, and it does it really quickly. So we don't want to include the very edge of the map, so it's an enclosed uh, level. So that's why we go from 1 to minus 1. And you just use this function that's part of the A star node. Uh, you add a point. And again, another function in the A star node is get available point. Basically, that just means uh, just get a random number because each point in an A star map has to have an ID. We're not going to keep track of it for right now. And uh, the other thing, though, that it needs is it needs to have a position. One of the things that is kind of annoying, but it's a free game engine, so I won't complain. Uh, you have to use vector threes even when you're working in 2D, uh, when you're using Godot's A star. Uh, so just remember vector threes. That's why I'm using all these vector threes is you have to. So now we're going to connect the points in the A star map. Uh, so we're going to loop through just the core of the map again. And then we're going to get the closest point. So since I didn't keep track of the point IDs, I have to use this function to figure out where we're at. Uh, get the closest point. If you just put X and Y there, you'll get the point that we're on. So I minus 1, so I get the point on the left. And down here, I minus 1 from the Y, so I get the point above it. And then we'll go ahead and connect uh, the current point. This is basically the same way as saying get the current point and the neighbor. So when we make the map, we're going to just go ahead and turn everything to rock, and then we will loop through each of the starting points and find our path to each side. So we're just going to use random, a lot of randoms, to find all of these points that we're going and starting, or starting and going to. So I use, I change everything to an int just to make sure Sometimes Godot gets real finicky about uh, integers and floats, so just making sure everything is an integer here. And we're going to find a random spot inside the core of the map, 
and then um, I didn't want it to be on the very edge of even just the core, so I kind of brought it in just one, is what that extra math at the end is. Uh, but then it's going to go to each side. We'll find a random spot on each side of the map. So the A star map, basically what this is saying right here is we're going to get a path, so get point path, from the starting point. Again, we didn't keep track of the IDs, so I have to use the get closest point to the X and the Y of the starting point. And then this is the end point. So we're, that's a very long line that just says get a path from the starting to the end. And when you use get point path, it returns an array of positions. And then we will loop through that array and set each position to a floor. And this yield is just so we can watch it go by slowly. If I take that out, comment that out, we just get a whole bunch of different maps. 